Hi, that is David Bishu. And that is Anders Hanola. We are light nerds and passionate about light and shadows. Lightbybisho.com is the home of sharing knowledge, videos, live events, workshop, and much, much more. After many years of trying different concepts, we have finally found a unique way to help you to understand how light really works so you can upskill with a smile. Lightbybisho.com has five sections with very different types of content. You're just about to see one full episode from one of the five sections. So for you to really understand what and how we are doing this, here is an episode from the Andy's Corner section. This is where Anders will cover topics that matter to him. We hope you enjoy this. Hello and uh, welcome. Uh, we are shooting from the Prophoto studio, uh, but with the difference that today I've been out shooting as well. Uh, fortunately, we have a sunny day, so which works perfectly for the type of pictures that we're going to show today. Uh, and um, uh, David, as you can see, is not by my side, so I'm here today alone with, with Ken. So uh, today's topic is uh, HSS high-speed sync uh, and we're going to talk about uh, uh, the do's and the don'ts what can you do and what you should not do with HSS we're going to also touch bases a little bit on the technical part on how it actually works which will hopefully help you understand when to use it and when not to use it uh, I'm also going to mention the uh, the new firmware to the Prophoto A1 that has a new feature called uh, 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 HSS boost. So what does that mean? And, and so for that I will um, uh, make sure that we, we cover that uh, in depth and also show the effect of it because it's actually a pretty cool feature but we haven't really uh, used that to promote it a lot and uh, which is unfortunate um, uh, since it, it actually gives you four times more, more light uh, when you put the boost on versus the regular HSS. So that's a lot. But let's jump into the, the technical part and uh, look at uh, what, how HSS actually works before we uh, move into some demo. Uh, and uh, as you can see, we have the uh, second camera. I'll see it's a little bit offline. We have a little bit of visitors here so let me adjust this so that you can see what we are doing there we go you can see Ken is there we have a camera set up we have an A1 flash and we also have a little special thing over there which is uh, my biggest fan um, and then I don't mean a fan like with a uh, as in a uh, who has me as an idol, but it's actually a simple fan that blows air. And uh, so we're going to use that to, to freeze some motion. And I thought the fan moves pretty fast, or fast enough at least. But then let's jump over to my PC. And here we go. So what you see now in front of you is the, the inside of the camera. We crept, in, crept into the camera and we see the first curtain and we see the second curtain and the blue part in the background is the sensor. And if you put the shutter speed at, uh, at one two hundredth of a second, which is for, for my camera, it's the sync speed where, uh, where they say it's a flash sync speed. So what does that mean? That means that at, at one two hundredth of a second, the... Um, and the whole sensor is exposed to light before the second curtain comes in. So it would look a little something like this if, if this was a camera. So let's hit the trigger and then boom, first curtain goes down, flash hits the sensor and then the second curtain comes down. So first curtain goes down, 
flash, and then boom, it closes. So that's what happens at, at uh, one two hundred of a second. So in order to uh, cope with faster shutter speeds, the mechanism doesn't move faster inside the camera because there's a limit to what it can mechanically, how fast it can move. So the way they have sold it, the camera manufacturers, is that they, they make the curtains move uh, differently. So when the first curtain starts moving, and if you have a shutter speed at, in this example, a four thousandths of a second, the second curtain starts moving before the first curtain is all the way down. Looks a little bit something like this. So what does that mean when it moves like this? Well, that means that the light is exposing a thin slice of the sensor at one uh, uh, at the time. So, so it, has, it, it doesn't show the whole sensor. So if you would put the flash now, boom, it would only give you a streak of light over the sensor and that's how the picture would look like. So in, a, in order to solve that, uh, flash manufacturers and camera manufacturers created something called high speed sync, HSS. And when we say high speed, it does not mean that you can freeze high speed with it. It means that the flash can synchronize with the high speed on the shutter. So that's what it means. So if we then uh, put on the high speed, and, and what it does then is that instead of just flashing once, it flashes, it pulses, it, uh, it sends out several pulses of flash and it would look a little bit something like this. So as you can see, uh, as soon as the first curtain starts moving, the flash starts to pulsate and send out flashes, boom, 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 and then the whole sensor gets this equal amount of light, and then you get the perfectly uh, nice lit picture. And we show it again because I really I'm happy with that animation. Normally, David is my animation guy, and he is the guy who's really good at doing animations. So, so I hopefully when he sees this that he approves on my fancy animation here, because uh, he is he is the master of uh, animations. So, anyway, that was uh, uh, kind of with a cool animation how the shutters, the, the different curtains in the camera, how they move and how the flash acts in at the sync speed when the whole sensor is exposed versus when it moves like a thin slitter. Um, so there is this one misconception, unfortunately, and that is that you can use HSS when you want to freeze motion. Uh, there are only two things that freezes motion, and that's uh, number one is the shutter speed, which you can, in most cameras, you can put it down to a one eighth thousands of a second, um, which is fast and is probably good enough for a lot of action. Um, but sometimes you need more. And that's when the flash comes in. With a single flash, uh, you can also freeze motion with a single flash. I'm going to draw some graphs so you can get to understand that as well right after a little bit of a demo. Um, but the single flash can be as short as one eight. 80,000 of a second, so it's 10 times faster than the fastest shutter speed, 10 times faster. Um, so, so no matter how fast camera you have, a, a flash in low power will always be faster, the burn time on the flash, and then you can use that to freeze uh, the action. Uh, but why don't we jump over uh, to the testing area and, uh, and try it with the flash. And we see if we can get the capture one up and running. So you actually get to see a little bit of what I'm doing. Um, so here's the test area. I'm going to pop this down. Uh, so where were we? Let's move over to this station here. Maybe we roll you closer so that you actually get to see a little bit what we are doing here. 
but here you don't see my biggest fan. I'll move you over like this. There you see my biggest fan. It's not big, but he's cute. So, here we go. Ignore Ken, he's not going to be part of this uh, initial game. Uh, we have a fan, we have an A1, and uh, we're going to take a picture of, we're going to turn off the f uh, A1, and we're going to take just to show you the, how the flash looks like when it's all stationary. And it should look a little something like this. So I'm going over here to capture one. So now you see stationary flash, nothing exciting, right? But uh, and now I'm using the settings as you can see on the screen, 160th of a uh, on the shutter speed, 160th of a second, and then uh, ISO 250, f3.5, nothing special. Uh, so let's jump, actually I'm going to take down the shutter speed to 125, that's where we're supposed to be, so we let in a little bit more light. So now I'm only using ambient light, so whatever light I have in the studio. And uh, now let's turn on the flash. noisy flash uh, and take a picture of it and you should see it's all blurry right so this is where uh, normally people say aha we need to uh, freeze it so um, let's continue with the ambient light and and only freeze it with the shutter so still no flash so I bring up the shutter to, um, uh, let's say, 4,000, 1 4,000 of a second. That means that it's going to be really fast and I need to let in some more light. And how do I do that? Well, I use the ISO to bring in more light. So here I'll probably need to bring it up to, using live view, say 5,000. So now I have my settings are uh, aperture 2.8, shutter speed at 4,000 of a second, and ISO at uh, 5,000 of, uh, or 5,000, ISO 5,000. I also have my white balance on tungsten since the ambient light is all uh, tungsten. So, so now we're gonna freeze it and see what happens, boom. And you can see, yeah, we can see there's uh, true propellers on the fan, but there is mo there's, there's motion blur. You can see, especially out in the outer part, out here, at the edges of the, f uh, you can see a lot of motion blur. So now the fun part starts. Let's add some flash. So let's keep these settings. I'm going to add a flash. I'm going to put. The A1 on, I'm going to bring down the ISO, since now I'm going to add a lot of light, so I do not need an ISO at 5000. Uh, probably it's going to be enough to uh, lower it down to 160. Uh, I have the remote on my camera at HSS and then we fire boom and then we oh you see what happened there it turned all blue that's because my white balance is still on tungsten so now I shifted the white balance on the camera and we retake that shot so what we see here now I'm going to just take this off so this is a shot taken with HSS and this is a shot with only ambient light. And as you can see there is really no difference in the motion blur. Because it's, oh, it's, oh, it's continuously 
uh, one four thousand of a second that freezes the motion. So, how do we solve that? Well, we turn off the HSS and go down to uh, only shooting with a single flash, which means I need to take down the speed. I'm going to take it down to 125th of a second and uh, probably use, I'll keep the ISO at 160, aperture uh, at uh, 2.8. So I'm going to bring down the flash low, 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 and I'm going to turn off some of the ambient light here. You do this and this. So just for you, if you want to see how it looks like. So I've turned down the ambient light a little bit, but not much. Uh, going back to the capture one. And then we take another shot. 125th of a second and a single flash. And what happens? And all of a sudden, boom, we froze motion. So this is interesting. How did that happen? So I'm going to turn off the flash and turn on the lights so that we see a little bit better. So you get to see me again. Hello. Uh, so what happened here now? Um, if we go uh, look at the pictures, that we took. Let me go through the action. Pop it into a computer. There we go. So we had the first picture, uh, just uh, ambient light, stationary fan, f3.5, shutter speed at 125 for the second, and uh, ISO 250. Looks good. Nothing strange. I'm zoomed in a little bit. And then turn the fan on, same settings, ambient light, it looks blurry, no surprise. And then I increase the shutter speed to one four thousand of a second and kept it on ambient light. Now I had to bump up the ISO to 5000. That's why you see a little bit of grainy or noise in the picture, but it's still blurry. Uh, and then when I put on HSS, I can bring the ISO down to 160, still a four thousandth of a second on the shutter speed, and still motion blur. So as you can see, it's more or less the same amount of motion blur in both of these pictures. Clearly, no freezing. And if we then take a single flash at 125th of a second, and, uh, and fired off at, at power level two on the A1, uh, you can see now I, I start to freeze motion. And uh, there are flashes that are much, much, have much shorter burn time than the A1, um, like the Pro 10, which is crazy and so forth. So, so there are, or the D2 and so forth. But, but still, this is only one A1 and nothing else, and you can still freeze uh, motion. Pretty cool, huh? Um, so now you might wonder, okay, so how does this work? Um, let me try to show it. I'll, I'll, I'll draw a little bit on my PC. Now you can see. Uh, these are the lines that I draw. The yellow, first I draw the yellow line, which is a regular flash, where it goes up in the peak and then tails off. And then you have the HSS, uh, where it goes pulsating like this, and then it tails off. Uh, this is the uh, one reason where normally you take the same amount of power and then you uh, keep it going on for a longer time. You, it tends to get a little bit longer or, or a little bit slightly lower. And what they've done now with the HSS boost on, uh, on the A1 is they, through the software, they managed to move the power level up uh, quite a lot. Actually, you get four times more light, which is amazing. So you actually goes up, and then it starts pulsating up here instead. And then it tails off. 
So the blue line is the HSS uh, boost that you have on the Profort A1, and then you have the red line, which is regular HSS, and then the yellow line is um, a regular single flash. And as you can see, that the time for the blue or either of the uh, HSSs are very long. But if we look at the single flash, it's much shorter. And this is why you can freeze motion with a single flash, but not with HSS. So it does not, because it, it will keep on pulsating as long as you are, uh, as long as your shutter speed is, is open. So if you have it at 4,000 or 2,000, it will actually keep on lighting in that whole period, while a single flash uh, is much shorter. So, um, that's uh, uh, that on, let me see, let me bring my notes here. Um, so we uh, uh, did graphs, so uh, that's kind of the, the don't, uh, basically don't use it to freeze motion, because uh, you will have motion blur, uh, as, you can so as you saw on the, uh, on the pictures. So then you might ask, oh, so when should I use the, the, the H H HSS? So w what are the do's? Now we've gone through the don'ts. And, and so th there are, I would say, three uh, good times when you should use uh, the flash. And, um, uh, and, and normally it's including sunlight when you're outdoors. So, so since I don't have Wi-Fi outdoors, I couldn't take this hold with me uh, to a good location. We'll need to scout for a good place where they have Wi-Fi so we can actually do a shoot outside as well uh, and send some of these. So let's take a look on what happened. I took Ken. I went outdoors. We are currently having a fantastic summer in Stockholm. So we had blue skies, really hot and as strong sun as you can have in Sweden. Uh, I don't know how I can compare it with the uh, uh, sun in Arizona or Australia or other places where you have a lot of sun, but it's very strong for being Sweden. So a typical picture, you take, you, uh, I'm using ambient light. I have sun in the back. Uh, I normally put the sun in the back so I can use it as a kicker light or a rim light. And the model doesn't have to squint because when you have strong sunlight in your eyes, uh, you either turn down your head, you nod down, and then you get double chins and all kind of terrible things happen. Um, uh, or if you have sunlight, or, then, or you squint a lot, and then you don't you get really small eyes. So now we have sun in the back. Uh, I expose the camera for, for the skin or the face, which means that the sky is burned out. It's completely white. Uh, so we have a blue sky. Uh, so what, I do, what do I do then? Well, there are a couple of options. I, I bring out the shutter speed and, uh, and I put on live view. And then I um, look at the live view and I take up the shutter speed until I get uh, the background as I want it. Uh, so I get the kind of the light blue sky, which is really high. Still using ambient light. But when I have this now, uh, you can see the face is too dark. And, um, and, and now, in order to light, now I've kind of created the need for flash if I want to combine the blue sky, the blurry background, because there's a house on the left side that I really don't like, it's not nice. So I, add, um, so I need to add a flash. Uh, and normally what you do, you take a flash, you put it on sync speed, like one two hundredth of a second. And, uh, and then you, f you look at it and it's way too bright, so you have to bump up the aperture up to 14 in order it for, uh, for it to be uh, even close to be uh, nice at the shutter speed of 1 200th of a second. If you have a shutter speed at 1 4000th, no problem. But if you have to bring it down to 1 200th, it lets in way too much light, so you have to close the aperture all the way to f14 in this case, which means I all of a sudden I have a sharper background. 
So now we can clearly see the house on the left side. Mm, it's maybe a nice house, but it's not what I'm shooting today. I'm shooting Ken, and I don't want that house to be so dominant in the picture. So this is where I take uh, HSS. And uh, with HSS, I can uh, synchronize the flash at the high speeds, like a one four thousand of a second, keep my aperture at 2.8, ISO 100, and, uh, and the flash is, is going, this was a very, very bright day, it's at full power 10. Uh, this is again the A1, straight on the camera, uh, so it's on camera, I don't have any fancy uh, patterns or, or light patterns uh, here, I'm just firing it straight off the camera. Uh, right in. So, so David probably gonna smack me when he comes back for not putting a nice uh, butterfly or something else on him. Or, but anyway. Um, so here you can see now with HSS I can have a blurry background and the blue sky together. Uh, and then we have the HSS Boost, where they through the software managed to lift up the the power level. Uh, and, and push out more power during the pulsating phase. So that it's very, very close to a single flash. And then this picture would look like this. So as you can see, I get a lot more uh, light on Ken. Uh, so the difference between this one is boost is on and here's regular HSS. So this is the difference that you have with A1 today. So. So that's one uh, time when you can really use uh, HSS, if you have sun in the back, shining uh, on a bright sunny day. Another occasion is when you have sun in the face. And uh, so here's an, uh, that was a bit boost, so here's one example. So here is ambient light, sun in the face. I'm using the sun and I positioned Ken so that he gets a very nice Rembrandt. Here ambient light, uh, sun is helping me out and giving me a nice Rembrandt on can. But I think the, li uh, the light in the eyes is a little bit too dark. We don't get enough light in the eyes it's, uh, and the shadows are a lot darker. Then I can use the A1 to, as a fill light to lighten up the shadows. And again, so if I'm, if I'm now at 1 1,600th uh, 1 of a second, it, I need to use high speed sync. So I put on here, I actually am at uh, uh, one eight thousand of a second to get this really dramatic dark blue sky. So I'm really cranking up the, uh, uh, the shutter speed to get this dark space, but also mainly I did it to be able to show you the difference on regular HSS and the boost, because if I'm at seven or eight, it will compensate and you wouldn't be able to see the, the difference. So now it's, I'm forcing the flash to go all the way up to, to 10. Uh, so here you can see, I can see the eyes clearly and the, the, uh, the uh, shadows are lighter versus the one with no flash. Uh, I still have a Rembrandt, you can see a little triangle, and, uh, uh, but it looks that for me at least slightly better. But if I want the, the, the shadows even lighter than this, then I can put on the HSS boost and then boom. Uh, you can still see that the, the little triangle here. So all I've done, nothing else has changed, but I put a boost on and so on. So the shadows here are much, much lighter. And so that's, now it comes to a, a matter of taste. Do I like this one or do I want this one? So that you can choose or if you are in a place where you have an even stronger sun than what we have here in, in Sweden, uh, then you might need to have run the boost all the time. And, and so this boost is only uh, currently available for the A1. So there is no boost for uh, B1X, etc. It's only for, for this one. So. First occasion, if you have sun in the, uh, in the back of the person and you want to have a, bl uh, a blue sky, then you can use HSS. Or two, when you have sun in the face, like in this case, and you want to lighten up the shadows, you can use it as a fill light 
uh, to take away the contrast on, uh, in the shadows, to make them less darker. So that was number two. And then the third occasion is actually something funny where um, we, uh, if you're indoors and you are shooting in a bright uh, studio like this or in an office space and uh, you don't like what you see in the background, uh, so you want to make it darker. So uh, you can actually use HSS to make everything a lot darker. And uh, so I'm going to move over and uh, to the little demo area again and, uh, and give it a shot, right? So I'm going to see over here. Now we're going to shoot uh, our dear friend Ken again. So we'll see. We'll move this over. Whoops. I changed the bite balance back to tungsten since it's all tungsten in here. And let's check where we're at. Zoom out a little bit. And get a little bit of sharpness over there. Yeah, perfect. We don't want to show you some unblurry pictures. We need a little bit of flash. So we're going to see here. Let's crank this up to 10. Place him right in front of you here. So we do this. Look into the camera. We probably need to change some settings here. Mm. Let's see. I put it at. 125th of a second, 2.8, uh, ISO 2000. Maybe you want to see this on um, Capture One, right? So where is Capture One? Here we go. Now you all should see Capture One. So let's take a test shot here. And boom. Whoops, I had the flash on. That's not good. So let's take another. OK, so what do we see? We see a picture uh, of Ken. We see some light background and we actually have people walking in the kitchen and we don't like that. It, it looks kind of bright and nice, but uh, it doesn't really help Ken a lot. So let's try to black that out completely. And, and how would I do that? So let's see if you can see on the setup here. Yes. So I have a flash here. Boom. Uh, which I haven't, I have not, it's not pointing straight at, it's kind of slightly in front of Ken, which means that I'm feathering it a little bit, not much, but still a little bit, and that's because uh, it's a bit too powerful, so since I'm fairly close, it's about a meter, and I got about a meter and a half, so six foot two for the Americans to the camera. And let's switch back to Capture One. Boom. And uh, now we need to put some settings on. We need to put the flash on. I need to put the flash on uh, the remote on high speed sync. And uh, I also want to then, I still want to have a blurry background, so I keep it at uh, 2.8. I bump up the shutter up to a 4,000 of a second. My ISO is currently at 2,000, way too high. It's going to let in too much light, so I lower it 
down to 100. And uh, let's take a shot. See what happens. Aha! Now I did it again. My white balance. So as I had my white balance for tungsten, I need to shift it back to flash. And boom. So now the background, I haven't touched anything. The background is exactly the same with the guys walking around in the, in the kitchen of uh, Profoto. But I'm using high speed sync to black out the background. And why we might say that, well, the background is, uh, or the, the shadow on the side with the, where you have the air is slightly too dark. So we can actually use a collapsible reflector to shoot this. So let me show you my gymnastics movements. So I take a, a collapsible reflector and I put it like this to lighten up, hopefully, the side with the, with the ear. And now we switch over to capture one to see if that actually did happen. Yay! So as you can see now, we have a lighter um, side. The shadows on the side are not as dark, you see, here, as they were on this picture. It might be way too dark, but here I've lightened up only with a collapsible reflector. So it's so, so easy. Uh, to bring your collapsible reflector 1A1 and then you can stand anywhere like in the bright studio and uh, uh, bright office and you can make a very dramatic dark picture. So that was uh, the third use if you want to black out the background when you're indoors and create this if, and if you don't have you know, a roll of black backdrop you can still you just do it with flash by taking up the shutter speed and putting on HSS and then it will take out everything in the background and then only use flash to, uh, to lighten it up. And with that, uh, those were the kind of the do's uh, that you can do a lot of cool things with that. Okay, anyway, thank you so much. See you all um, soon. Bye.